Oh. <laughs> well, we can't go live if we're muted. So. You know, that's so funny. Like, every week it's going to be something. But yeah, I think that's okay. Um, it's still fun. It's Charlotte and Jessica. We're here um, at Aragon Wine Market in Pensacola, Florida. Again, I always say Pensacola because last week we had people joining us from Argentina. We did indeed. That was yeah. fun. Yeah, and, and one time we had um, Italy as well, which was kind of neat. Um, we've actually changed our background and I don't know why we haven't been doing this from the very beginning. We're actually sitting down now comfortably. Yeah, comfortably. <laughs> For what those of you cool don't mind in the background. That's right. <laughs> Every week I tower over Charlotte with my five. And I sit up self. on a little um, platform that's a little wooden platform that the neighbors so made. So we try to balance our wonky heights <laughs> on camera. And so this is far more comfortable. It's I don't know why we haven't done this. And the wine in the background super cool. So those wines in the background are wines that um, we've done for uh, the neighborhood um, Christmas party. We do it every year. Um, it's a little walkabout. And everybody, um, all the neighbors join in. And we go to different houses. And the Aragon Wine Market's always a stop. And I always get a three liter, big three liter bottle. And make everybody sign it with a Sharpie and put the date on it. And it's, it's pretty cool. So that's that's what it is behind us. Those are all those cool bottles back there. And I'm we actually sure. had a customer comment on the Christmas walkabout <laughs> the other day. And I, I didn't know what they were talking about. So that's oh, exciting. Wait, really? oh, I okay. can't wait to experience that for the yeah, first time. Yeah, it's so much fun. We're, like I said, we're always a stop. And, um, but anyway, so um, nice to sit down. Um, we're, summer is going into fall, so That's we are right. going to continue um, with these programs throughout the fall, we think. Um, we've got some interesting and fun things on deck. I don't know how anything could be more interesting than wines from India, but, yeah. um, but we are going to have some really cool stuff. And um, stay tuned to the end of um, this broadcast, and we'll tell you what we're doing for next week. And it's going to be a super cool one. Um, and you'll, it will, you'll need to get some prep. You'll need to get some, um, supplies in, um, to follow along with it. So it's, it's going to be pretty neat. Um, so we'll, Definitely. we'll see how that goes. Um, by the way, I went to a wine tasting on Sunday at Potrist and Pino. My first, one of my first real outings, you know, I've been kind of staying close to home, but it was outside and, um, it was, um, limited people and, um, ran into a few customers that come to the wine tastings. Hi guys. It was so nice to see everybody. Um, we are missing having the wine tastings here. Definitely. But one of the customers um, told me that they have gotten both of our virtual wine boxes, box one and box two. And what that is, is yeah, absolutely. So over the last, the course of the last, I don't know how many weeks, um, couple of months now, uh, quite forever. a few months, forever and a day. We haven't been able to see your pretty faces in the shop, and so we've done these virtual wine tastings for you. Uh, we box those up the first 12 or first six weeks in Provo Case 1, and then the second six weeks in Provo Case 2. Um, that way you can take those home, and because these are recorded, and they're on our Facebook page, and they're on our YouTube page, um, at any time you can grab those, and we put them into a promo box for you, so you can go back and watch the videos, and get the education um, yeah. from the different distributors and different special guests yeah. that we've had. So if you want box one or box two, and we're working on box three now, um, just call us at the store and, yeah. and place an order for it. Um, this customer has done one and two, and they said that they kind of think of it as a wine club, um, which is kind of a cool idea. Yeah. So it's their little virtual wine club, um, steals and deals, I think is what they said. Um, which is kind of neat. Yeah, that's cute. Uh, yeah, we do offer a 15% discount on that promo case. So the first yeah. um, promo case one, it was almost, it was $47 and some change, um, almost 50 bucks in the savings. Saved. Yeah. With that 15% discount on promo case two, same, it was a solid discount offered to you uh, to get those wines and take them home and enjoy them maybe for the first time or again, if, uh, if you've already yeah, had you like them. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and so, excuse me. <laughs> So we just ate sushi. Shout out to Cons. It was delicious. Thank you, Winston and, and everyone. Dot everybody as always. So, so yummy. What was what we were thinking what would be great with um the wines from India is um, something a little spicy. Um so Winston came over and brought us some incredible um couple spring rolls, um, some uh, crab rangoons, oh, yeah. and um, some, a couple of rolls. And so Hans is one of my favorite um, restaurants downtown. Um, my favorite, I think, is their um, the pork belly 
Um, if you can get it, and I don't even like telling you this because it's my little secret, I feel like, but um, they do have a special that's not on the menu occasionally called It's the Hamachi Cheeks, mm. and it's divine. If they have it, go ahead and get it, unless I'm coming in because they do have a limited supply of it. <laughs> and then they're pre-ordered by Charlotte. Yeah, usually. So um, so anyway, my favorite there is the whole fried fish. I would never oh my forget. God. I had just gotten back from a week in Guam, uh, spending a week in Guam many years ago, and whenever cons had just opened up, and it was the first first restaurant in Pensacola that I'd ever seen actually have it on the menu. Um, and I believe it yeah. was, it was Pompano at one point in time and a couple of other fishes, but it's absolutely exceptional. Yes. And yes, I ate the tail. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, nice. it's, it's like a chip. Oh, she's a Southern girl. She's I from am. Alabama. So we know, you know. we know y'all eat everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's, shall we go to so, India? Yeah. So how this works is yeah. that um, hopefully you've got your bottle or bottles of wine. Um, at the end of this broadcast, I'll tell you the wines we're doing for next week. So it gives you a full week to get your wine. We're doing the Sulu wines tonight from India. Um, the Brut Tropical, which is an incredible bubbly. I had it this week um, with, uh, I made gumbo for the first time Yummy. ever, believe it or not. But I've always yeah. been kind of um, uh, scared or intimidated, intimidated by um, by making the gumbo. The process seems it's intimidating. Yeah, it, made, it took me three hours to make it. Yeah. So. Um, so, but I had it with my gumbo and, um, so that's the first one we're starting with. And then the second one is the, um, Shiraz, which is a nice red, um, both from India, which is super cool. So, um, please, if you have questions, feel free to type in your question. We're having, um, Natasha and Fix will join us in just a sec and we'll pass those um, questions along to them. It makes it more fun if we have interaction and they like questions as well. So um, please join us and join in. And so, like I said, we're doing the Sulu wines. Here we go. Let's get Natasha in. All right. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. It's lovely to be here. Thank you Absolutely. so much for joining us. And where are you joining us from? Um, I'm here in, in in Central Florida. I'm just outside of the city of Orlando. Okay, All right. Florida still, still hot. It's incredibly hot, but and rainy, but um, it's you know Florida. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, and we're gonna also add um, Fixie in here. There he is from Winebo. <laughs> Oh, I like, I like, okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Fix your muted. <laughs> we love you, darling, but you're muted. So let's. No, nope. Oh, you can hear me now? Okay. You know, I thought I was in tune with, I was saying that I was in tune with the universe uh, because I was listening to some George Harrison and I was kind of getting my Indian thing ready, but I guess I wasn't in tune with the universe because I didn't hit the uh, the right button. But you know what? The universe put me in the right place. So I'm, I'm all good. Yeah, well, so Natasha, have you been to the Sulu Winery? Because going to India sounds like the coolest thing to do right now. I feel like it would be one of the best trips of my life, truly. I was supposed to go in September, but that was canceled. Um, but, um, you know, representing these wines year after year has been delightful. I work hard on the brand because I believe in what they do there. And um, hopefully in the future, we'll get to go. And when things open sure. back up, I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. But um, one of the things we were going to be able to do is go to Sula Fest, which is held at the winery. And it is, it, I, we're just sort of refreshing looking at the website again today for Sula Fest and the lineup of musicians and you can either camp or stay at the resorts that are located. Yeah, it's top notch. It runs for a, for a long weekend there. So I'm sad I'm missing it, but at some point maybe it'll it'll open back up. Yeah, I hope so. Is, um, is it something that they do yearly on their property? That's correct. Yes. Every year they host uh, Sula Fest uh, at the winery. They have a huge amphitheater there and enough wow. that, that folks can camp and they bring in all the accommodations. They have a, a bazaar, which is like a, a fun market you can walk through and people are selling their wares. It's, it seems to be very cool. So I'm going to look forward to that for another year. 
Yeah. I just would say for me, festivals and that sort of environment of energy is, is definitely something that I miss. I, you know, I, I miss so many people. I miss live music. I miss, you know, being in that kind of atmosphere of yeah. being able to walk through a market and listen to music and do a wine and a huge, you know, huge environment and huge arena. And so I know me and the yeah. others are anxious to get back to that. But we're so thankful mm -hmm. that you're going to today and share this amazing wine. And that's what yeah, the thing about this virtual wine tasting is that we have been able to connect with people, um, not just in Florida and um, this area, but in uh, a lot of different areas. We had somebody from Argentina, you know. France, mm -hmm. um, Italy, and that's that is the benefit. That's probably the the silver lining. Yeah. <laughs> so. I was thinking the same thing. You know, I've been able to come up to visit you all in person on a couple of occasions, but we've never organized something where I was going to while while I was there to host an event. So being able to do this with you means a lot. I'm you know I'm six seven hours away, and here we are, and we're able to you know try to throw out a cool Indian vibe, taste these wines together. People can tap back into it later if they want to. We can talk about the food. We can talk about India. We can talk about the winery, of course, and the wines. So. It's going to be fun tonight. Well, you know, just to, we can just start basic because honestly, until I saw these wines, I really didn't think about wine in, in India at all. So I didn't know if there's, um, are there wine regions? I mean, I'm sure there are wine regions and, um, and sure. just like any country. So Nashik, where the wines are from in Sula, are it, that's considered their Napa Valley. There are roughly 60 wineries there currently. When when Sula started, it, there was a fraction of that, um, and of course, with their success, they they make up about sixty percent of the export um, for um, for India, and it is probably the widest known or the most known in terms of what's exported into the United States. There are some Indian wines that come over in bulk wine that are produced for juice or put into wines that are um, produced mass produced, but this was the first winery to put you know, an Indian label um, and to take things um, to the next level, um, opening a tasting room amongst, they, I have a list of things that um, they were the first at, at going after and accomplishing. And this largely has to do with um, Rajit um, Samat, who is the owner, the proprietor of, of Sula Vineyard. He had a vision after graduating from school um, in Sanford here in the United States, Stanford, here in the United States, and then going back home and visiting a piece of property that his father owned in Nashik. So that's where these wines are from. You'll see it spelled a couple different ways. You'll see it spelled N-A-S-H-I-K, and then also N-A-S-I-K, but it's pronounced Nashik, so Nashik, India. Um, it's located on the western um, coast of India. It's within a large uh, city or, or, or country within India, a large sector um, that is largely Hindu in population um, and is considered a, a location for pilgrimage. If you are on a Hindu pilgrimage, their, their city is a, is, a large, is a large draw for that. Um, so when he went back um, after graduation and saw this land, his father was considering selling it. And he thought when he saw it, having been in the United States, having made lots of great friends while going to school here and traveling to our wine country here in the U.S., um, Napa Valley and Sonoma specifically, told his dad, he says, I think this looks a lot like Sonoma. I think we should do soil composite studies and see if we can sell, we can produce um, grape or cultivate grapes on this land. And so they did plant some other fruit varieties before they got into grapes. And, and then the grapes became the mainstay once uh, Rajit came home and started, you know, thinking about the concept of potentially making and growing wines um, on the property. So that's kind of where it started. That's yeah. me. So he, he had a California connection um, before he decided to do the, the yeah. wine. Yeah, they have a, a California winemaker that oversees the, the the property and oversees the cultivation of the grapes straight through to the bottle, and then they have a chief winemaker that it, that resides in India that um, that also is all obviously you know in touch with the wines and the vineyards on the daily. And how long how long have they been in business? So um, Rajit established the winery in 1996. 
That's when he first planted his vines. And then in 1999, they released their first, um, their first vintage, their first bottling. Barely, barely, um, not that long ago. Mm -hmm. No, not that long ago, but um, I feel like the wines at this point, now they've reached a level of maturity in their, in their vines. And so the wines have yeah. developed certainly over time. They have uh, both red and white varieties that are planted there. So, and, and then they also have purchased fruit from neighboring farms. So it's not 100% estate grown fruit. There are other, um, other farms there as well. But as part of the community, I also think it's interesting that they um, are able to employ lots of people in the outer banks and the villages that are there. So they're able to, you know, people that perhaps weren't able to own homes of their own now are able to have full-time employment okay. of the um, and, and then create, creating their own farms and having a reason to sell, to grow grapes so they can sell them to Rajit to produce Sula. So he works closely awesome. with the community. Yeah. That's really yeah. neat. And you may have said this and I missed it, but um, about how many acres do they have there? Um, he only planted five when they first started to just oh. test the grounds. And now they are 3,000. Oh, wow. 3,000 wow. acres. Yeah, 3,000 yeah. acres. Hence being able to host a music festival, right? I oh, mean, that's right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> 3,000, that's quite, quite a lot of growth. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. So, yeah. so well, I know weeks ago, a month ago, possibly um, now, Michael Fix brought this in as, you know, one of the joys of this business is that we get samples all the time. And he brought this in as a sample, and we first fell in love with the bottle. Just the, it's beautiful, you know, it's a beautiful bottle. It's an eye-catching bottle. And the Paisley is representative of so many things in the Indian culture already. Yeah. Um, you know, um, prosperity and so many other things that, you know, it's a celebratory, um, uh, symbolic design. Absolutely. And so that yeah. caught my eye because I, I, I love the design of the bottle. I and love it then, too. Um, before we even decided to do this, I appeared this for a sushi pairing for a good friend of mine for a, a girls' weekend over in Destin, and it was a huge hit, and everybody loved it. And I think the more that we tapped into it, oh yeah, um, everyone that has tried it leading up to this, we were like, we have to feature this because it's so delicious. So, you know, and it's, know, um, it's a blanc de noir. Yeah. Yes, blanc so de noir. So. so so the grape, it's predominantly, 70% um, of it is red cultivar and it is um, Syrah and Cabernet Sauvignon. And then the balance is um, Chardonnay and Chenin Blanc. Ah. Um, it's, it's produced in traditional methods, so traditional method champenois. Um, and it's, the, in terms of like what you'll see in the glass, you have these beautiful peach um, and coral tones in the glass, there you go. Yeah. Um, and then on the palate, it's got this really gorgeous, like lush peach. And if you're eating anything spicy from the sushi you mentioned before yeah. to um, Indian cuisine, obviously, and then also um, spicy um, Asian cuisine, Thai food, Chinese food that may have a little kick, a little chili, chili spice. Um, great bottle of wine cleans the well, palate. Let me tell you, I um, and this is the South. Um, so I made gumbo for the first time um, this week. And um, I was thinking, what am I going to pair with my gumbo? You know, what, what am I going to pair? And immediately this came to my mind. I, and it was awesome with my spicy gumbo too. So it, you know, I do a southern, southern thing too. So, oh, definitely. I could absolutely have this with some jambalaya or some, you know, red beans and rice, certainly some, a number of other flavor profiles. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. it, and it's weird. I mean, it does have um, a sweetness to it, but it's not. It's. I wouldn't describe it as a sweet wine. But it wouldn't either. Yeah, but I, it think that, well yeah. With spicy. I think the residual sugar in it is is in check. I think the wine is balanced and clean, and I think that it drinks beautifully, just in terms of what you get both on the nose as well as front, mid, and back palate. I think all the way through, the wine is clean and refreshing, and and varietally or, or sound in terms of the quality of the wine and how it's made. And the, I mean, we always kind of mention price around here because we're retail, but the fact that um, it's made the same way as, um, as champagne at a fraction of the cost. And I believe yeah. it's only $22 a bottle on the floor here in the shop at Aragon. So it's a solid price point yeah. for an incredible bottle with that you know, traditional method. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, uh, do you have any other um, bubbles? 
Sorry, say that again. Do they make any other bubbles or is this their, um... They make an entire line of, of sparkling wine. This is the first of their first Blanc de Noir that they've produced and the only one in this incredibly beautiful package. The rest are very traditional in nature, but they do, they produce, I think, hold on, they have five sparklings in total. So there's oh, four oh, wow. aside from this. And yeah. six. We'll be <laughs> gathering some information on those. Hey, I, well, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, first and foremost, let me apologize. Uh, I don't think we have all five of them available in Florida currently, but uh, we can work on that. What we have, uh, a what, we, what we have available in Florida currently is the Brut Tropical, and then we have the Shiraz, Riesling, Chenin Blanc, and Sauvignon Blanc is also available. The Sauvignon Blanc is not in Florida, but it is in the United States. So if there's an interest for it, we can certainly accommodate on the Sauvignon Blanc. Everything there's there isn't anything else imported into the United States, but that is also you know conversations that can certainly be had. Sure. And how long has he been coming into the United States? Um, he's been coming in since almost the first vintage. Like he okay. he, he has his own um, uh, within India. He also operates as a distributor, so he houses things like Beluga vodka and sells that in India as well as his own wines. He has some Burgundy. He has a, a, a nice diversified portfolio. Um, I work for Dreyfus Ashby specifically, so we're fortunate enough to have uh, Sula wines in our portfolio. Um, so he, um, we certainly have access to, to other things. And in all, he produces about 21 wines under the Sula label, depending on whether it's reserve or a sparkling or the classic um, or the, the, the tier that we're drinking here with the Shiraz. Um, and he also has a, a conservation label called Kandu or Kadu. It, and it's um it's around it, it's based around um, tiger preservation. India, as you oh, may or cool. may know, has a mm -hmm. uh, mass population of tigers, and so it's it's to help conserve, um, you know, as they're on the endangered species list. So the proceeds for the sales of that, and those are largely found um, in in areas where they have game lodges, like Africa. Like he doesn't he doesn't export those into um, the United States. That's super interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. I was going to ask if they were exported just um, yeah. with the... But I guess we're, if we want any of those or any of those other bubbles, we'll have to go to India. Maybe we'll all have to go to Sula Fest is, I think, the answer. I, I'm down. <laughs> I mean, sign me up. <laughs> I, mean, I can't imagine a better way to go to India is to do Sulu Fest. Absolutely. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be yeah, so cool. cool. Well, you're not going to find very many Blanc de Noirs uh, for this price point made uh, Method Traditionnel or Chavanois. It's just not going to happen. And the body and the fruit is really beautiful. It's so great with, like we were talking about with anything spicy. But, you know, we're not as blessed in other parts of the country to have as many Indian restaurants as some larger cities would. But we do have a few that are local. So please support them, too. And you know, and, and grab a bottle of this and it would be great with curry. Awesome. I mean, again, yeah. a little bit of residual sugar is so nice with something that's got a little bit more spice to it or a little bit, not just hot spice, but just complex spice. Even. Right. It doesn't have to be spicy hot. It just can, even that complexity is nice to have. As we always say in the wine business, if you're in doubt, you just drink bubbles with something and you can never go wrong with bubbles ever. I like ever. that. Yeah. That's a good. Yeah, definitely. When we started talking earlier, when Pond had mentioned, you know, maybe we'll get some sushi and all of that from from there. You know, they have a delicious veggie udon uh, stir fry that's got some heat to it. That you know, it's really really aromatic. They've certainly got some curries, and then Taste of India right here in Pensacola certainly has got some delicious um, things that would pair well with this. So. Uh, my mind automatically goes to food. I don't know. I'm yeah, so always. Hungry all the time. I always want to talk about it. Like, <laughs> what, what do we eat? Uh, feed me Seymour. So, um, I know. Absolutely. But I'm curious, um, and I don't see any questions. I don't see anybody asking any questions, but I'm curious to ask our viewers if anybody has applied any other Indian wines or this wine or even knew about um, Indian wines because. Um, I've been in the business almost 12 years, and really, this is the first, my first experience with um, wine from India, and it's been awesome. And you know, obviously, you never 
say I've learned everything I can about wine, so I'm done with that because it's a never-ending process. But um, but it's pretty neat to be able to try wines from um, India and what Lebanon recently, um, you know, um, different countries. It's it's great to see it expanding, you know, beyond just um, the traditional countries that we think and know. Yeah, yeah indeed, that's very very well said. Well, we don't have any customers that are commenting. Nobody about, has anything nobody to have say any about that, guys. Has anybody go ahead and talk about the Shiraz? We can move on to Shiraz. I was going to say, this spends some time, I was uh, trying to remember, this spends some time on Lee's, correct? Let's, I think, maybe talk a little bit yeah, more about it. Yeah, it does. Yes, yes, it does. It spends, uh, excuse me, it's 18 months in total, and it is on the Lee's um, in terms of this. I, you know what? I didn't find anything in terms of, like, dosage, like, levels or anything along those lines for, uh, reported from the winery. Um, but again, I think that like the, the sugar level is definitely in check. It's in balance, um, works really well with, with all types of food. I'm glad you mentioned curry because I was thinking the same thing. Like it would be really nice. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think there's enough, there's enough balance and, and structure in this wine that every time you have a sip of it, like it really cleans the palate and your every bite's like the first bite. Yeah. And yeah. I love that, especially with, you know, cuisines like, you know, Chinese and Thai and Indian food with all of that complex spice that Michael was talking about. Well, and then like I said, even my gumbo, um, you yeah. know, the Southern thing here and my gumbo was not um, super spicy. It wasn't like put your mouth out hot, but it like had that complexity um, that Michael was talking about of just spice and, you know, the feeling that mm -hmm. kind of earthiness to it and, you know, all that kind of layering of flavors um, that you want from, um, Absolutely. from a good gumbo. <laughs> and I think that's something that certainly I've, I know I've learned in the last few months of, of doing these virtual wine tastings and being here with our airline, you, know, you know, just having something that is you know, sweeter to balance out that, that spiciness. You want something that has that residual sugar to balance out. Otherwise, it just completely eliminates. You know, all you have is just that just super, super spice in the mouth. Yeah. yeah. Um, or alcohol. Yeah. Like too high in alcohol. Too high in alcohol. All we taste is the alcohol. So, mm -hmm. well, um, Pam, thank you so much. We're glad that you're enjoying the silkware. Um, it's, it's their first Indian wine team, Davies, commenting. And so we're glad you guys are enjoying it. And it's cool. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Um, so, this is their first Indian wine. Great. Um, I think it's probably most people's first Indian wine. Like I said, it was mine, and I've been in business for a little while, not forever, but you know, um, for long enough. And I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it. Um, uh, I, too. <laughs> and this is my second bottle this week, so I can't say. I play mine, too, I, to be honest, because I took a bottle over for like a little <laughs> congestion. So uh, we've enjoyed a lot of Yeah, we're totally fans. <laughs> Well, we went to the ones with the right. so, yeah. so when I was looking on the um, um, uh, website, um, it said um, cab straws. And so um, when it says straws on the label, I know that a lot of times there maybe have a little bit of something else in them. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the red? Sure. So this one is this Shiraz. It's actually 70 percent. Excuse me. No, it's 85 percent Shiraz. And then the balance is Cabernet Sauvignon in this bottling. This is the 18 vintage. OK. Um, and then they also have a reserve Shiraz, which is the Dindori um, Shiraz that they produce, which spends a little bit more time um, in French oak. Um, and it's a bit more full bodied uh, in its style. Um, so this Shiraz, again, is 85 percent Shiraz. Um, and then Cabernet is the balance. Okay. Um, yeah. So this one, um, it's it's quite full bodied in and of itself, and it will give you some really cool notes on the palate. Um, the nose has got this deep core of red fruit on the nose that's really penetrating, and then on the palate you get some baking spice, you get some cinnamon, some clove. There's some um, black pepper. Um, if you're picking all of that up, like it's it's beautiful and a little bit maybe even just a touch smoky on the palate. Yeah, fix fix called the smokiness earlier, um, mm -hmm. and we just opened ours. I mean, um, it didn't no decanting, no you know none of that. Yeah. It's, it's ready to um, ready to drink. I'd say. 
Yeah, I love that he's invested in Stelvin Enclosure for these as well. So that makes it really easy for the customer. Um, the fact that he's invested in that because it's much more expensive to do Stelvin than to do cork enclosed wine. So um, I, I, I prefer this for, for this wine. I think it's great. Is it a silly question for me to ask why is that? Why is it more expensive to do that form of bottling? I think it's I, I think it's it's the machinery. It's having that machine and having it at your winery. It then requires all of the additional things that machines require. So now it needs maintenance. It has to be looked sure. after, as opposed to just buying cork from your you know from whomever or wherever you're purchasing cork from the cork tree, a cork farm essentially, who's who's harvesting their cork from the tree. To put into um, to put into wine bottles, so it's expensive. It's more expensive to do a stone enclosed procedure uh, on your wines, um, and it's it's a, it's a true investment because um, you. Own that. It is, but I think in the long run, it's a good investment because then you don't have to deal with TCA and yeah. issues with the cork. Um, uh, I mean, I have found um, bottles that have been compromised even with a screw top, but it, it's much, rare, much more rare than uh, than with a cork. Yeah, so, agreed. Yeah. I think it, also they've proven too that the, it doesn't, in the ageability of it um, is, is still, it's still valued as an age worthy wine with the Stelvin enclosed um, capsule, so. I'll let that question all the time. You know, especially, you know, certainly there are people, customers that come in that are, well, you know, they assume because it doesn't have a cork that it's not a, a quality wine. Which I think yeah. it's certainly, you know, a misconception that has been far proven otherwise. Um, you know, we definitely have migrated away for a number of reasons, migrated away from corks and migrated to this form of bottling. Um, but you know, it's always important to discuss again. I, you know, I'm learning, everyone's learning. And um, I always try to, you know, expound upon the fact that this is a, a way of the future and a lot of wineries are going to moving away from the and moving to this form of bottling. And so it's good to hear, you know, your feedback and your information to kind of back that up. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's, you can buy a $60 bottle of Australian wine that has a, has a Stelvin enclosure, uh, or no, AKA screw cap on it. Six, $60, I mean, yeah, that's a that's not a cheap bottle of wine. Right. You can buy a sixty dollar bottle of German Riesling that has a Stelvin enclosure on it, and mm -hmm. you know it's just the way of the world. It's just the way that things are moving, and right. there's a there's a reason why a lot of these producers want to do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. And the wines do age still very gracefully. Uh, they may be slightly different from a, a oxygenation or oxidation, you know standpoint but there is still some oxygen transfer there so they can right. still age in that environment is it different yes but there's these winemakers would not do it if they didn't believe in it these guys are putting their heart and soul and their and they're literally their their blood sometimes into their work you know they're in the vineyards they wouldn't do it if it didn't make sense absolutely yeah and i um gosh before i was in the store so it's been over 12 years um i remember when um australia had a mass cork burning they took all of their cork and made a big deal and made it a big deal and said we're not having any more corks in australia at all period and that's when everybody in i mean if you australia has been doing it for like i said many years um and it took a little while for everybody else to catch up, I think. But I think I would say they were the pioneers in my book um, of, of starting the Stelvin enclosures. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty neat. Yeah, I can remember when I first got into the business that the, the stigma surrounding Stelvin was, you know, close to 15 yeah. years ago, same thing. And I remember that very specifically, there were a lot of Aust Australian wineries that we were representing at the time that um, came into the market with that as well. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, for all of our, our customers watching, just to, you yeah. know, it's not necessarily indicative of a less quality wine. <laughs> it certainly no, is. No, and, I, and yeah. even in California, when I went out, um, gosh, this has probably been 15 years ago as well. I think it was Spotswood, which is a pretty well-known brand. They would give you the exact same 
bottles, that same vintage, everything. And it was a two pack and you could get it, you could get it with a stipend and you could get it and they would, the other one would be the clerk. And so it was kind of like a novelty almost. It was like, here, you know, see, see how it is, you know? So yeah. Cool. But yeah. I love the label on this bottle, by the way. I do too. Yeah. I do so too. I love it is a CBS Sunday morning fan on uh, it's every Sunday morning on CBS. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They do the sun and I know this is, that's not, but it reminds me of CBS really Sunday does. morning every time I see the label, which is a wonderful show if you've not watched it. <laughs> no, it's the Charles Kuralt effect. Uh, well, Charles Kuralt is gone now, right? It's, I, I forget who's on there now. He's not there anymore. It's, um, uh, the lady name. I'm like the rest of the uh, upper end of the millennials. We don't have uh, like regular television anymore, so like I don't know what's on at all. But, yeah, right. I mean, I I don't even. I have, two, I have two small children, so I barely watch anything that's not um, Franklin or um, Paw Patrol stuff like that. But I will say, you know. Uh, as a as a person in the wine business for a long time in the restaurant business for 15 years prior, CBS Sunday morning was always like my respite of like relaxation on a Sunday morning after a long Friday and Saturday of working in restaurants. It was great. You'd wake up, you'd watch it, have some coffee, have some bacon and eggs, maybe drink some wine, you know, because it's Sunday morning. So you know, I totally get you with that. I like his little mustache that's on there too. That makes me think of the Beatles in 1967. Me too. You know what? Was it the Sergeant Pepper that had the mustache like the quote? Well, yes. Me too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Wynton Marsalis was the um, guy that does the CBS Sunday morning. <laughs> anyway, everybody needs to watch CBS Sunday morning and grab you a bottle at 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, there you go. It yeah. prepares well with CBS Sunday morning and uh, apparently a night of drinking. And bacon. <laughs> this would be great with Sunday morning bacon. I mean, why not? Let's 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 it cook up some bacon and have some charas. Football barbecue for sure. Um, okay, so um, on a football kick, fit, football season is starting tonight, and the NFL kicks off with um, the Chiefs, and um, I guess they're playing Houston or somebody like that. I don't even remember. Yeah, it's the Houston Texans. It's the Houston Texans. <laughs> Jane Polly, thank you. It was Jane Polly. Jane Polly. She, she, she took over the um, main role on Spears and Thank yeah. you, producer. Our producer, Our producer <laughs> is hollering from the sidelines for Jane us. Polly. <laughs> and go to. Yeah. So this would be actually, um, let's talk about, so we, we, we diverse. Let's, uh, not diverse. <laughs> we digress. Do? Digress. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, Nicholas, tell us a little about the flaws, like, me. Flavor profile, all the yeah, all that really pretty dark fruit. If everyone's out there tasting alongside, or they are um, pulling the bottle and tasting and watching this on on your um, channel later, yes, it should have um, on the nose. Or actually, let's talk about the first. It's that really beautiful deep purple color in the glass. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, uh, and then as you give it that first swirl and you start to pull it into the nose, the aroma should be a lot of really beautiful, that dark fruit. So you're thinking blackberry, um, you're thinking dark cherry, not fresh, bright cherry at all. It is deep, dark, almost like stew yeah. fruit even on yeah. the nose for this wine. And then on the palate, you're going to start to pick up the smoky aroma, the smoky flavor profile. It's its delicate. I don't want that to be a turnoff for people to be like, oh, smoky, I'm not sure. Um, it's accented with notes of cinnamon and clove. Um, it's, a, it's got a lot of depth to the wine. So yeah. mm -hmm. for that, we are moving into fall. Um, the weather will cool. We'll start thinking about roasts. We'll start thinking about stews, crossing fingers. Yeah. Um, we'll start thinking about fall food. Sometimes even when it's hot, I still have to go into like a fall mode in terms of what I'm doing in meal planning. And Shiraz becomes a mainstay in my house for this time of year for sure. 
Yeah. Um, it's also interesting, you know, we, we are a barbecue state. I mean, we cook on our grills, you know, a couple times a week. Um, and if you're, you know, going to do that, those smoky flavors, whether it has barbecue sauce or a dry rub, or you're just putting, you know, something else, even steamed, even vegetables that you're going to, you're going to put with that. So then they're going to pick up that smoky component. They're going to work beautifully with, with a Shiraz. And this Shiraz is no exception to that. Absolutely. So it, it, to me, it has a very old worldy kind of um, flavor. Um, so I think if, if, if somebody is like, well, I don't really know if I would like that or not, you know, by what we're talking about. I mean, if you like, like maybe say a Bordeaux even, I would say it's very that old worldy um, flavor to me. And that may be just me, but. Um, I feel like the old world characteristic comes from a couple of things for me on this bottle, um, the tannin structure. So there's a lot of grip on the wine and that will lend itself for people to think like, oh, what wines from Europe, old world style that have a lot of tannin and grip? Um, Chianti's, so Italian wines certainly, um, Bordeaux you mentioned. So that in terms of like the grip and the structure of the wine. But then in addition to that, um, the depth on the palate is mm -hmm. long and, and bolder and more full bodied than, than you would think of a new world wine. So I think that it does lend itself to the old world spectrum. If you are an old, if you enjoy old world wines, you're feeling adventurous. I think this could potentially be a great bottle. Yeah. yeah and this bottle. is not on the more floral side of Syrah or Shiraz, same yeah. grape, you know, for some of our viewers who, you know, don't know that it's Syrah or Shiraz, same one six and one half dozen of the other, so to speak. But this does not go to like that violety kind of floral component. This is more to the, maybe more to the Aussie side or, or even to some people might, might have this akin to some South African wines to a certain degree, yeah. um, which they, yeah. grow, they do grow, uh, they do grow yeah. Shiraz there. And of course they have other older wines um, that are somewhat, somewhat similar to this. And it's, I don't think it's a mistake that being in sort of the Southern Hemisphere, although India is not necessarily considered Southern Hemisphere, it's kind of, you know, in that middle area, so to speak, um, that they go to that describing it as Shiraz, which to some degree is almost a style, even though some people would argue it isn't. But in some ways it is. It's a way of approaching that grape that other places in the world don't. Yeah. So yeah. and then I was also reading on the... Um, on the website today that, and I assume this is it, the best-selling wine in, uh, red wine in India. So the Shiraz is um, is a wine enthusiast top 100. It is, and this vintage, the 18, which is currently available in your store, um, is a wine enthusiast top 100. It is a Best Buy wine. Um, so yeah, it has it has the bells and whistles to go with it. It's been it's been tasted and it's been rated and it's been reviewed. Yeah. So I don't think it's we I don't think we said our retail price on it is our um, retail price on this is fifteen dollars a bottle. So that's crazy. You know, I mean come get one. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. you can go and then you can go to your friends and you're like, Oh, I just had this wonderful uh Shiraz from India. India. And like, yeah. India. Honestly, like if you're going to any any holiday party or fall party if you're moving yeah. in, you're gonna go barbecue, like roll in with this. Oh, absolutely. Everyone's going to want to taste it. You should bring in two yeah. bottles because it just the first one I want to taste it. And then the people that love it are going to be like, can I get another glass? So, absolutely. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, hey. that's a great, great call. I absolutely have uh, a lot of wine here. Holiday parties, fall parties, for sure. Fall gathering, tailgating, you know, if you're, yeah. you're going to want it, you're tailgating at the, you know, kind of in, environment at the house while you're watching the football yeah. game. This is absolutely something that would pair well with everything that's being served there. Natasha, you're taking my requisite sleazy salesperson role. I'm the one who has to say you're supposed to buy two bottles. I'm I'm that guy. I'm supposed to be that guy going, hey, yo, take a couple bottles. Why not? Why are you only buying one? You should be buying three. Hey, how many cousins do you have? Um, but I would say if you love lamb chops, I know um, this would be just exceptional with yeah. lamb. Um, you know, certainly with some nice spice rub on it or something kind of complex, yeah. it would be amazing. You know, anything that's one of those barbecue or grilled things that you're never really sure what to pair with, this would be kind of one of those wines, I think. 
Yeah, you know, I agree. Yeah, a I pork chop, maybe not so much, but anything that's a you know a cool kind of dish that you're not really sure of, this would be right on it. Even with the gumbo, Charlotte, if it wasn't too spicy, it yeah. could work with the gumbo. If it's hot, it's yeah. a little tough with the tannins, but um, it could work if it's not too spicy. Yeah, I was just gonna. We were checking the alcohol percentage on this, just because um, you know you definitely don't want anything too spicy. What thirteen? Yeah, thirteen is um, you know that's reasonable. That's that would that would pair well with um, with gumbo, I think as well. My brain so. went to I want a house rubbed and like smoked beef brisket with some char grilled vegetables. Yes. And oh yeah. Can we just all so, hang up and go eat now? So I'm <laughs> hungry. Just cause cooking later. Um, yeah. So my in the kitchen. <laughs> I hey, I was in the kitchen for three hours on that gumbo, so I've done that for the week. So education, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and um, it, it, it is. It's you're right though. As far as taking it to um, an event, people are going to be all over this, going, "What is that?" that is and it's so fifteen dollars cool. a bottle. I mean, if you think about what what bottles you're buying week, week to week in the grocery store, or you know, not to downplay any of those wines, I'm sure they're they're nice and they're comfortable. But to step outside of that comfort level for you, you know, move from that twelve dollar, thirteen dollar bottle to something like this, and just like explode your mind. <laughs> you right. know, like yeah. really take it to the next level. I, I mean, it's it's absolutely delicious. I know we kind of skipped over some of the like technical aspects of it, but like talk to me about the bottling process on this. Like, you know, is it aged and what is it aged in? How long does it sit there? So is, for this bottling, it's going to be partial oak fermentation, partial stainless steel, and then they combine. So it's got a nice balance. It's not meant to be the reserved here, which has been aged and spent some time in, in French oak. Um, this is a combination of the two. So it's it got a fresh side, but it also has a little bit of depth of character, and that's going to come from the oak maturation that it sees. Yeah. So um, I know that I'm sure the reserve is something that, you know, would be uh, great to stick in your cellar and age. And I've been harping yeah. on this. Um, been harping on this lately. The, the, the Zindor Reserve Shiraz is available in the United States. It is here. We okay. we, import, we import it. It's not in Florida, but it is imported um, to the United States. We have inventory on it. We also have, you know, to explore the the whites. We also have the Riesling uh, in stock in Florida available to you, as well as the Chenin Blanc. And Chenin Blanc is, I mean, like one of the, I mean one of the things that you see in France, you see in um, South Africa. Uh, um, yeah. Is it one of the more popular white grapes in India? It is actually. Um, Chenin Blanc is the most widely planted white variety in India. They do really well with it. It's a lovely bottle. And again, I think it has a lot of the same characteristics in terms of being pairing well with um, you know, Asian cuisine and, and Indian cuisine. And if you know, like South Africa, same thing. Chenin Blanc is a hallmark for them. And they actually have a large uh, Indian population there. And Chenin Blanc does very well with the cuisine that, that comes forth along Indian and, and African um, cuisine. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and just to backtrack for a second, the Brew Tropical did have a blend of the Chenin Blanc, the Chenin in it, correct? Yeah, it has yeah. a Chenin and Chardonnay both. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I love them both. And they call me Senorita Bubblita occasionally. So um, that um, the bubbly is just, I think, another one that you could definitely um, bring to holiday parties and people would be like, yeah. that's beautiful bottle oh, right. and it right. tastes great. Yeah. First of all, the bottle is stunning. And then when they taste it, it's, it just pairs really well with lots of different types of cuisine. It's lovely. Well, I mean, it's a triple threat because it's a beautiful bottle, it tastes great, and it's from India. And so it's interesting. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's important. So. Well, good. Well, I think we are wrapping up our wines tonight. Thank you so much, Natasha. Thank for coming you. Us. I'm hoping yeah, we'll see you, you again. I know you've got some other um, some other brands that you represent, so we might uh, we might drag you back in in October. Drag you back anytime. Invite me back anytime. I loved it. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks, Fix. <laughs> Thanks, <Wimbo. laughs> All right. All right. Have Thanks a great night. Thank you, Tasha.
guess it's just me here for everybody right now. Yeah. Let me tell you what we have coming up next week. We've got two amazing wines that we are going to do with a cooking class of sorts. I'm buying time while the owners of the establishment Hi. jump back in, and here they are, uh, which they can introduce it now. Guess what? We've just left. Sorry. Apologies. So anyway. <laughs> so do you want to take the lead, or should I? So, um, so we are going to talk about what's next. Um, so next week, um, I would like you to take the lead, Fixie. <laughs> Tell us what's next for next week. We've got something super, um, super exciting um, it planned, um, and it does require planning on your part. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yes. So there will be a quiz. You're going to have to do your research. No. So we've partnered up with uh, Troubadour Find uh, uh, Private Dining, which is a uh, reservation only uh, restaurant, ostensibly, or pop-up restaurant that's located where Duh is. Some of you might remember where Type was originally that Blake Rushing did from Union Public House. And so reservations only, uh, the menu changes once a month and they have different wine pairings once a month. We're lucky and honored to do those wine pairings with them, myself. Um, and so what they've done is they are going to, and we will be sending this out to everybody, a recipe for a dish that people can cook at home. Uh, we'll send you those uh, in the next few days. And we have two different wines you can pair with it if you want red or white or both. And we're gonna we're gonna have both of those options available. Yes, both. You want both of them. Please. Please. But yes, so it's a dish that actually will lend itself very much to either red or white. Uh, we think they're both very good. They actually were chosen in conjunction with Ashley and Alex, who are the proprietors of Troubadour. You can check them out at uh, I think it's troubadourdining.com. Really cool place. Uh, they're going to give us uh, a menu for the dish, uh, excuse me, or a recipe for the dish that you can purchase the ingredients, how to prepare it. And then on next week, we're going to have a sort of video presentation uh, yeah, like, yeah. Julia, like Julia Child will be there. Um, yes. Going to take the live interview to you today. So that's really super cool. So Troubadour is awesome. It's one of the places that I got to go. That was one of my favorite to go places. Um, um, so, uh, will Troubadour be offering the dish at their restaurant on that same day? That's a that's wonderful awesome question, question, Ada. Um, is that, do you know, Fix? If they will be offering that? Uh, I, believe, I believe it will be on the current menu. Uh, I have to double check that. Um, it's something well, they've yeah. been doing. So you can find it on their website. I believe they have the current menu for the month. It's always just for the one month and then it changes. So if you see their current menu on there, um, I, I believe it's on there. I, I'm sure yeah. that it's coming now on Monday. We will send out the newsletter for Aragon on Monday, and I'm sure that you know we'll, we'll find out that recipe answers. information on Monday, and they can definitely let you know um, for sure if for they're going to be offering. For people that don't want to cook but want to enjoy it, um, you know, like sounds like Ada doesn't want to cook tonight or next week, so um, I get that. Um, so, um, so that's another option. Maybe just go pick it up at Troubadour, um, grab your wine and then come and watch the broadcast and see how you make it because, um, we're going to have a video asking for a lazy person myself. <laughs> Thank you, Ada. There's plenty of lazy people out there. Um, I'm kind of tired of cooking myself. So, um, I get that, but, um, we'll, we'll have a little more, more answers, um, in the newsletter when Jessica sends that out. Um, but it would be fun if you do like to cook to um, grab your ingredients um, and, and and watch the video, drink the wine. We'll still be here talking, unfortunately for you. Um, hey, should we tell them what the wines are? Um, yeah. Okay. Do you, have pick, do you have the bottles or something? So, or? Uh, so no. we, we, Jessica's going to go grab the bottles. Okay. The wines are um, um, Baden Horst, right? Baden, Baden Horst, Horst, yes. Yeah, Chenin we have Baden Horst. We've been talking about Chenin Blanc a lot tonight. 
Um, so this is a South African um, Chenin Blanc. Um, Badenhorst is one of the leading um, uh, wineries in South Africa. Um, so it's going to be a wonderful South African. And, and actually, the Troubadour people, um, they came up with the wines. This is the, um, this is the Chenin Blanc. Um, they paired the wines. So we didn't choose the wines. We let the um, Troubadour people choose them because Ashley mm -hmm. and them know um, exactly um, what they wanted to pair with their, their food. And it makes more sense when the chefs choose it than Always. you know than the people. And then the uh, Selena um, Pin uh, Pinot Noir from Willamette is the red. So. Um, so good. yeah, and I think a good a good thing to introduce here would be why are we doing a red and a white with one dish? Um, it's going to be a risotto dish, but it's also going to have tomato and seafood. So a lighter body red wine will work here with a seared. I'm not going to give it away totally, but a seared seafood um, main protein with also tomato and risotto and herbs and then a white. So either one of those wines is going to work um, if you do both, even better, right? This way you can serve the same dish to some people that maybe like red or don't like right. or want white or whatever the case may be. It's going to work really nicely. Or if you want to... Um, sub out the protein for something else. You're going to have that option that will be very easily okay. done. So you, you you could you know I think that everybody that's listening will be able to once they get that blast from us as to what the ingredients in the recipe list is, they'll be able to figure out if they want to tinker, you know, yeah. the protein a little bit or something like that to their wine if they really yeah, want to give, give everybody options because I know there's some people out there that are just like I love red and then there's other people that are. I love white, and so um, and then you know, like me, Absolutely. I love both. I love all and of it. <laughs> it's important to also uh, let people know because um, I think this is a really cool event, and I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, Alex was at the French Laundry in yeah. uh, in California. He was in Piedmont at uh, a restaurant there. Um, you know, he's been and he was at again, which everybody here knows, Restaurant Iron which is um, on right. Califat, and he was the sous chef there as well. Yeah. And Ashley was, was the front, one of the front of the house managers there. So, and I know everybody loves iron, um, and I'm sure right. there's some people who have been to or heard of the French Laundry. So, Remind me to tell you about my French Laundry story next week. We will, we will. And so that just gives you an idea is um, we're gonna have um, a really chef prepared uh, pairing for you here. Yeah, it'll be fun. Ask you to cook food. You don't have to do it that night. You don't have to do it the night before. Maybe you watch, get little tips, watch it on YouTube again after, and then do it the next weekend. Yeah. Um, or may me, me, or you, may, you may be able to pick it up. Um, you may be able to pick it up that night, or yeah. you know. So we'll we'll check on that as well. We'll so. definitely confirm that. We talk about this often. You know, where it grows together, goes together, and we're always throwing out food pairings that may or may not, you know, uh, hit your fancy or, you know, uh, tickle your fancy, but certainly it's an awesome opportunity to uh, have it stray from, you know, the horse's mouth of the chef's yeah. mouth. <laughs> yeah, it'll be what, fun. What, you know, from a red and a white standpoint, this is what we suggest that, you know, the beautiful dish could be and some suggestions yeah. um, for you guys to prepare at home. So yeah. it's a super exciting show next week. Yeah. I cannot wait. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. Yes. Drink wine. Okay, drink okay. more wine. And so I will say um, that um, Michael I'm has sorry, come up with. Out. Michael came up with. <laughs> don't do that. Um, Michael came came up with that idea, and he great really idea. come up with a lot of great ideas. Um, we've been doing this virtual wine tasting since uh, April, um, sometime in April, and he has come up with all these wonderful ideas. We've got some really incredible ideas coming up because. We're just getting better. I mean, look at us. We're sitting down yeah. now. We're sitting I know. We're sitting under all things in a background. I didn't even have to take my shoes off to broadcast. <laughs> I know. Because we can tell them hovering. So we still may have some technical difficulties because we're not perfect. No. <laughs> um, but, um, but we do have some great stuff coming up. Um, we are going to kind of just tease you on that because, um, you know, we've got to keep you, got to keep you interested. And, um, but... I think it's going to be some fun stuff coming up um, and the holidays will be coming up. We'll see what happens then. We'll, yeah. just, we'll see. And um, reminders, 
um, the virtual wine boxes still available. Yep. Um, box one and bo box two are available. Um, let us know if you're interested in grabbing um, the wines that we've done on these shows and going, you can go back and watch the videos with them. Um, also, uh, another shout out to Cons because Definitely. they got us some nice sushi to go with our Indian food, food or flush. Indian uh, wine tonight, which was awesome. Yes, and, certainly um, delicious. Yeah, it was yeah. a good show. And um, next week, um, be looking out for our um, uh, milk chip. We send Monday, it out Monday, Monday. <laughs> so we send it out on Monday. Be looking for it. It will contain hopefully the um, recipe and any more information about the um, the wines that we'll be doing and the uh, the Troubadour um, class that, Absolutely. that they'll be presenting. So and as always, if you have any questions or you want curbside pickup or anything, you need to make a special order. Just give us a call at the shop 850-433-9463. Wow. We'll see you next week. Bye, y'all.